All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the best settings for console players in Black Ops Cold War. These are the settings so far that we can adjust in the alpha of this game. If anything changes between the beta and the full game, I will have an updated video. But for this weekend that we get to play, these are the best settings that I recommend to you. Before we get into it, make sure you guys drop a like on today's video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are brand new. And without further ado, let's hop straight into these settings. Okay, so I'm gonna try and make this video as short as I possibly can just to show you guys my settings. I am playing on PlayStation 4 right now, and these settings should work with PS5 when that comes out, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, slash Xbox Series S when that drops as well. Uh, just overall, if you're using a controller, even if you're using a controller on PC, these settings will help you out quite a bit. So like I said, these are only the settings for the alpha so far, so if they add more, I will have an updated video, but starting off with these settings, here we go in the controller section which we are mostly here for for this entire video uh, we got the input device as the controller obviously and the sensitivity that i've been running uh, ever since they introduced this horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity i've always used 6 6 but i've seen a lot of people move over to the 20 20 sensitivity and the highest you can go in this game so far in the beta is 14 so uh, Modern Warfare people are using 2020 in this game you could use 1414 but the only reason people are doing that with a controller is because they have a control freak ring now you pair a control freak ring with a control freak thumbstick and you can use those higher sensitivities without so much of an aim penalty accuracy penalty because your aim will be like controlled if that makes any sense it's a control freak i'm actually sponsored by control freak so uh they just sent me one of their uh precision rings so i'll let you guys know how they actually work but i've heard they work pretty good i've been using a thumbstick uh for probably like the last four or five years from them and my accuracy in fps games has improved drastically so if you guys want to go pick up a control freak at checkout make sure you guys use code lone wolf for 10 percent off your order uh, but yeah, that, there's that. I don't really mess with my ADS stick sensitivity for low zoom and high zoom. I might move it up and down just to, you know, see it, what it does. But besides that, it's usually just nothing too drastic. I keep it around the one range. Uh, my button layout has always been uh, default. Uh, this is just up to preference for you. But I always use default. And then what I do is I flip my L2 and my R2 with L1 and R1. Just because L1 and R1 are buttons essentially so that means that they'll have faster response time instead of using the triggers especially if you don't have a scuff with trigger stops i just use a regular ps4 controller um i use l1 and r1 scissor buttons so if i aim by hitting l1 it's going to immediately aim if i shoot with r1 it's going to immediately shoot instead of having to wait for the trigger to push all the way down to aim in uh, wait for the trigger to push all the way down to shoot so that's why i've always used flip uh, ever since i can pretty much remember i think even since the ps3 days uh, i think even the aiming and shooting was on l1 and r1 in the ps3 days i don't know but i don't have invert vertical look on i have that as disabled i turn off controller vibration just because i don't like the way it messes up my aim personally to me it just it's just difficult for me to aim with my controller shaking all over the place with dual shock but i don't know some people like it personally to me Nah, but uh, moving over to the gameplay section of the controller, uh, slow down and strafing aim assist. This is something kind of new. Uh, I just stick with the slow down aim assist. It's the traditional aim assist that we all know and love in Call of Duty. So keep that. But the strafing aim assist says affects your movement when aiming at enemies to help you stay on target. So maybe I'll do testing with that. But for now, I just stick with what I know best, which is the slow down aim assist. Uh, aim down sight behavior. I keep that on hold attack vehicle control mode it doesn't really matter what you have on here this has nothing to do with anything so i'm personally not gonna be playing ground war in this game so i'm just gonna keep it on aim based but uh moving over to the graphics which is an important section uh, i have my brightness on default which is 50 uh you know safe area that just you know depends what your screen is like uh split screen i'm not gonna be playing split screen so that doesn't matter but the most important uh setting here is the motion blur now for the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Alpha, you're gonna have to disable motion blur before every single game, because for some reason it resets every time you go into a new game. So I think you can even do it at the main menu screen, like just before you get into the next game, you can disable it. Uh, but just to be sure, like when you get in the game, first thing you do, pause the game, go to graphics, turn off motion blur, because you're making things harder for yourself if you're keeping the motion blur on. Uh, you you wanna be able to see straight when you're playing the game, so definitely keep that off. Uh, and then audio, here's what I do. I keep the master volume up, turn the music down a little bit. 
uh, everything else I keep at max and then uh, the audio preset that's best for this game is super crunch has always been the best one to use in Treyarch games in my opinion so definitely throw that on if you're using a headset uh, voice chat enabled microphone volume that doesn't really matter and pretty much I think those are really the main settings everybody cares about uh, keyboard or mouse I don't use keyboard or mouse um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's really anything else that I need to go over. If you want to turn off your profanity, or yeah, if you want to turn off the profanity filter, you can like put that on disable just so if somebody types in the chat, you can see what they actually say without having those stars. You can turn off your friend request notification and party invite notifications if you get a lot of those. But besides that, those are all the settings that are in the alpha so far. I'm sure there'll be more in the full game and maybe even the beta. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But those are what I use uh, currently for this alpha weekend. So... Uh, probably not going to change anything because everything is the way I want it from the games that I've played so far. And uh, yeah, so let me know if these settings help you in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys drop a like on today's video, man. The best controller settings to use, in my opinion, in Black Ops Cold War is Alpha. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys are brand new. We are on the road to 30,000 subscribers before the actual official release of Black Ops Cold War. Uh, make sure you guys turn on those post notifications when you subscribe to never miss a video. Follow me on Twitch and Instagram at the TheLoneFXP. Like I said, I'll leave you guys um, a video soon when I get those Control Freak Precision Rings to let you know how that works. i am be trying out like max sensitivity with that and a, a thumbstick on top. So uh, if you guys want to pick up the thumbstick for sure, I know that it works because I've been using it for five plus years. Like I said, and it is amazing. It helps your aim out, helps your accuracy, precision, all that good stuff. So definitely check that out. Code Lone Wolf at checkout for 10% off your order. That's going to wrap it all for me though. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.